Hi, my name is Keith Hoodlett. I'm a trust and security engineer here at BugCrowd, and today I'm going to be giving you a quick demo of our bug bounty platform. So first, at a high level, when you jump into the, your program, you'll see uh, just kind of a quick dashboard of the things that are currently in processing. So we have an application security engineering team here at BugCrowd who have years of experience coming from companies such as HP, White Hat, Rapid7, and Veracode, among others. And they have a, a distinct skill set in terms of being able to look at findings that are produced here on our platform, understand that they are valid in scope and not a duplicate of any information that you've provided or even other findings that have come through on your program. And we'll go ahead and just like a valet service, make sure that they're bringing all of the bugs that you really care about that are unique and in scope for your program right to you uh, in a triage state. So what you'll have here is that triage state pretty much tells you, okay, these are the things that we validated as real vulnerabilities, again, that they're in scope and they're not a duplicate of anything that's been provided to us or any previous researchers uh, providing findings on your program. Then, of course, the items that need to be fixed. These are the things that you've accepted as vulnerabilities, you've paid out the researcher accordingly, and now your development team is working through actually developing a fix to those findings. Finally, fixed is pretty straightforward. It lets you know that uh, these are the things that you fixed. Good for tracking purposes, as I'll talk about in a little bit from a timing perspective to see how quickly fixes are coming through on your program. You'll also see just kind of a quick high level activity just to determine any sort of interactions that are taking place on the program as well. Uh, but if you ever want to go ahead and see kind of what's going on as part of your program, you can simply go into submissions or you can just click on any of these sections down here just to dive right in. So if you ever want to go ahead and just see any of those new findings that have been provided, you have the right to do so. Again, our application security engineers will go ahead and triage any findings within 48 hours that are critical or severe, and within five days for anything that is uh, of a moderate priority within your uh, actual program itself. So as an application security engineer here at BugCrowd, I might look at this and say, okay, this is server-side template injection. Uh, I kind of understand here that they're executing some code to get back the Etsy password file. Now, the researcher might have mismarked this. This is server-side injection as parameter pollution, but I know that this is actually remote code execution. So I'll just go ahead and change that accordingly. And for that, what will happen here is it will go ahead and mark that as a priority one because based on BugCrowd's open source vulnerability rating taxonomy, we mark a remote code execution as a priority one finding because it is critical to your infrastructure in terms of what the researcher could potentially do as a result of that type of vulnerability existing in your environment. Basically, the vulnerability rating taxonomy is just a common language for you as a company to understand the impact of the findings that our researchers are producing. And of course, for the researchers to have an understanding of what the payout levels are based on the criticality of the findings that they're producing. So again, that's an open source solution for you to quickly get an understanding as a common language of the kind of findings that are coming in, as well as, of course, uh, the value to the researcher in terms of actual payout amounts. So as an application security engineer at BugCrowd, what I would do then at this point is say, OK, uh, this is a priority one. We need to get this over to the customer right away. I'm going to go ahead and move that into a triaged state. So for you, that's when things become important. So what I'll do is I'll just click on submissions. As the customer, this will automatically bring you to triaged. But again, you can go through and look at any of the findings that we've gone ahead and worked with as part of your program over on the left. Now, looking at this, I say, OK, priority one server-side template injection in the wild. Uh, this is a remote code execution finding. This might make sense to me. If not, I always have the ability to ask questions directly of the researcher if I desire. Or of course, if I want to trust the application security engineer to perform something on my behalf, whether that's seeking more clarification or validating or revalidating the finding accordingly, I can leave the note for BugCrowd right here. Now, the value in leaving a note for BugCrowd is that we have a long-term relationship with these researchers. This is something that our application security engineers have built up over time, again, through years of experience working with these researchers producing findings on our platform. As such, if you would feel more comfortable having us work with that researcher, you can certainly do so. And, and again, we're happy to do that on your behalf. If everything here makes sense based on the information that's been provided, you can simply choose the reward amount, which will default to your priority one finding. Maybe this researcher went ahead and uh, went above and beyond in terms of providing us useful information to replicate this internally. So I might give them, say, $11,000 instead. 
as just an added bonus. Maybe I want this researcher to perform more research on our platform. This is a way to incentivize them to do that. Once that's taken place, I can go ahead and just move this into an unresolved status, which will pay out the researcher accordingly. They also get some researcher points, as you saw there, that will give them reputation on our platform. At this point, it's really up to the team at my company to go ahead and uh, go ahead and fix that accordingly. So this is something now where you can push it directly to an on-premise JIRA integration if you desire. Uh, or, of course, we have a two-way JIRA integration where you can go ahead and push it down, and then when you've closed the ticket inside of JIRA, you can push it back accordingly. Uh, just real quick, I'll show you for the JIRA integration itself. For any of those items that have been pushed directly to JIRA, you'll get all of the same information that was produced as part of that bug bounty uh, researcher's submission to your program, as well as any of the common information as well. So this is pretty much what it looks like. You have the ability to do some custom fields uh, to go ahead and pull in different information accordingly. But with that being said, once it's in that unresolved state, I can just quickly take a look at all of the things that need to be fixed accordingly uh, inside of the program itself. Now, for your kind of just review, you can go ahead and take a look at how the submissions are coming in, who's providing submissions accordingly, uh, and just kind of the general overall state or health of your program. You can also look at the rewards just to determine how much you've paid out over time. This gives you an idea of overall spend on paying out researchers accordingly. And then finally, if you want, you can go ahead and take a quick look at the insights as well. Of course, you can download that to a PDF or CSV accordingly and show it or display it in any way that makes sense for your organization, perhaps on criticality, vulnerability type, source, etc. Overall, this is just a kind of nice overview of the general health of your program over time, the criticality of findings as they come in, uh, the number of submissions and open vulnerabilities that get moved around, as well as the target breakdown, both by the actual target itself and the kind of findings that are coming in on your program as it exists as a whole. Now, one of the most important things here is going to be performance. And of course, what you're going to see is you're gonna see some high numbers here. Again, this is a sandbox environment. So these numbers are not at all indicative of the kind of things that you'll see inside of your program. What you'll actually see is uh, this days on average transition or average to transition is generally around 1.2 days for our application security engineers to bring in a new finding and push it over to a triage state uh, accordingly or of course deduplicating anything, marking the things as won't fix, as won't fix, etc. Our SLAs say that we're going to go ahead and get any critical or severe findings over to you within 48 hours of submission. And then of course any of those moderate or low findings, so the priority three or priority four, get over to you in about five days uh, from the initial submission by the researcher. Either way, uh, this is your way to track how Bug Crowd's application security engineers are getting information over to you. Now, this middle item, so days on average to transition, this is going to be for your company to determine how quickly you're actually accepting the findings or making a decision to change some code as a result of the findings that are being reported to you. From there, you can also track uh, the days on average to transition from how quickly you've accepted that finding to how quickly it is being fixed. This is a great way to track how your actual development team is performing overall, so that way you can know how quickly you're actually fixing things in your organization. And if you need a breakdown, you can get that by criticality as well. So to the extent that you might have faster transition times for uh, moving items all the way across the board, that's ideal. But if you start to see that maybe things are slacking on, say, the severe level for how quickly you move them over or even how quickly they get fixed, it's a great opportunity for you to get an internal sense of how quickly you're working with the highest level of findings versus perhaps those low or moderate findings accordingly. Now, if you want to get an overall view of your spend, you have the ability to also look at that here just to determine how much have you spent on overall researcher bounties. Now, again, this is money paid directly to researchers. This is not something that Bug Crowd takes any cut of. The costs associated with Bug Crowd are simply based on the number of targets and the overall access to the platform itself. Any money that you've gone ahead and earmarked for researcher payouts are directly to the researchers, and we have no part of that. So to that end, you have the ability to also look at the spend that you're paying out to researchers based on the actual targets themselves, just so that you can go ahead and determine what are we getting the most amount of value out of in terms of paying researchers for findings on criticality of the different targets in scope. That is, again, something that 
Our team here at BugCrowd will work with you throughout the process to make sure that we're scoping things appropriately, getting those critical applications that uh, you need for your, your overall business workflows looked at, getting researchers' eyes on, and of course, going ahead and working through the process of making sure that we are bringing all of the bugs to you that you really care about. If you have further questions, please feel free to reach out to us, sales at bugcrowd.com. Again, my name is Keith Hoodlett. I'm a trusted and security engineer here at BugCrowd. Thank you very much for watching this video.